What's going on guys? My name is Nicholas Saka and today I'm going to help you pass your insurance state exam. I'm going to give you guys the best tips and the things that have worked for not only myself, but my employees as well. I own a few insurance agencies here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and every time I hire a new candidate, I've got to prep them and, and get them ready to pass the state exam. And so I've had uh, dozens and dozens of employees that have taken and successfully have passed the property and casualty exam. And I'm gonna give you guys just the cold, hard uh, facts and tips of what I tell them each and every time, you know, they're, they're getting ready to start studying and to take the property and casualty uh, uh, exam. What I would tell you guys is that I personally am an awful test taker. Uh, <laughs> I was never good in school. Um, I, you know, ba barely a 2.7 GPA, um, and that was strictly because I'm a relationship a relationship builder. I don't think I'm a smart person. You know, if I walk into a classroom, I'm getting cool with the person to the left and to the right of me. Uh, <laughs> and whenever I don't understand something, I'm like, "Hey, bro, uh, can you break that down to me? What did the teacher just teach?" Right? So I'm not a good test taker. Um, and if you're watching this video, you're probably not a good test taker either. And that's okay. Um, I believe that the property and casualty test is super easy as long as you follow the tips and tricks that I'm gonna give you guys today. So stay tuned. If you get some value, uh, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button where I talk all things insurance, self-development, and entrepreneurship. And so uh, you can also follow me on my social media platforms as well. Let's get into it. All right, tip number one, guys, is to actually put in the work. Put in the time studying for this test. It should take you, on average, uh, it's taken my employees anywhere from two to four weeks to study and pass this test. It doesn't necessarily, you know, you shouldn't take longer than four weeks to pass this test. Um, unless, of course, you have a full-time job or you're full-time parents and there's a lot of, you're not able to give it the time that you need. But I'm here to tell you that you can pass this test. I had a girl do it in six days. I hired a girl. And then less than six days later, I mean, she scheduled her test two weeks out and less than a week goes by, six days to be exact. And she calls me back and she goes, Nick, I passed the test. I was like, what the? I thought we scheduled it two weeks from now. And she's like, nope, I rescheduled it because that's all I did for the next six days was study for this test. And um, so I'm so the first tip is, guys, put in the work study your face is off give it hours and hours and hours of work and time and uh, that's the number one tip <laughs> to passing this test the second tip guys for passing your property and casualty test is practice exams practice exams practice exams i said it three times because that's how important it is i am the type of learner that as soon as if i'm going to take a test right before I go through any of the modules, before I go through any of the learning chapters and things like that, I'm the guy that likes to reverse engineer everything. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is go straight to the practice exams. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take that for the first time and I'm honestly gonna guess. I'm just gonna see what my basic knowledge of the insurance industry is and I'm going to uh, just see what how the questions are being asked. See what, you know, how you know how they're formatted you know what what they're looking for and what, how i can take this information and reverse engineer it after by going through the, the the different chapters and the different modules and understand what they're looking for so i like to reverse engineer it i will start by taking the practice exams and i will uh take the practice exams over and over and over again and hopefully trend in the right direction so the first time i mean i've done this where i've taken the practice exams and i'll score like literally i'm just guessing and i'll score a 50 percent and my number one goal as i go through all of the modules is to as i take more and more practice exams to trend in the right direction and so i know that i'll be ready to pass the the official test if I'm, you know, after every practice exam, I'm getting a little bit better. So if the next time I take it, I get a 60% and then a 70%. If you start floating around the 80s and 90 percentile, you should be ready and prepared for the test, for the actual in-person exam. And so 
Um, in most states, I know here in Nevada, that you do need to get at least an 80% uh, for the actual exam. And so you'll really want to focus on scoring anywhere from 80 to 100% you know, on these practice exams before you actually go and take the actual exam, if that makes sense. So practice exams. I'm also the type to write everything down. And so at the end of these practice exams, it will actually break down which, you know, what, an what was the right answer? And they'll, there should be a little description as to why that was the right or wrong answer. And if I'm you, I'm writing down every single question. I, for me, things stick better when I'm writing it down. And so write every right and wrong answer down and learn from it so that way you get a little bit better. Even if it's a little bit of memorization, um, it's not, I mean, I don't recommend trying to memorize because you know, uh, I'll get to another tip later why that could backfire, but write everything down and that should help you prepare to pass this test. My third tip guys is that when you're actually taking the in-person exam, don't second guess yourself. There will be an option to flag the questions that you're unsure of and you know, what I would tell you is to go with your initial, uh, initial gut feeling on what the right answer is. If you've answered the question but you flagged it because you're unsure and you go back to it later, don't second guess yourself. Don't change your answers. Uh, a lot of times you're going to, your, your first gut instinct on what the right answer is, is the right answer. And if you go back and you change it, there's a good chance that you'll miss the, miss the test or miss passing by a few questions. And that might be the one. And so rule of thumb is to don't not second guess yourself and go with your initial gut and don't change your answers when you go back and you're reviewing you know, your answers put at the very end of the test. Don't second guess yourself. The next tip is to read the questions thoroughly. The insurance tests love to change the entire trajectory of the question by one or, one or two words. And so you will need to read the questions thoroughly because like I said, they're, they're gonna purposely try and trick you. They're gonna put you know, there's gonna be one word in the question that would make the answer, you know, say D, but you know, but the real, the right answer is B, and they're gonna put the they're gonna put both answers to try and trick you um, on those questions, and so pay very pay a lot of attention to the uh, to the to the pay a lot of attention to the questions being asked and and specific words. You're looking for key words that will change the entire answer. And, you know, and as you go through the test, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the wrong answer. You're gonna be like, ah, you sneaky son of a guns. Like, like I see what you were trying to do there. Um, but if, when in doubt, read the question again, read it slowly, take your time with it. And, uh, and that should, you know, help you pass the test. And my last tip guys is that if you fail the test, if it's the worst case scenario, if you fail the test, which there's a really good chance that if you put in the work and you follow all the other tips that you should pass your first shot. Um, but, you know, ha very few of my staff, you know, I would say about a third of them do have to pay take the test uh, a second time. Um, and very rarely does somebody need to take the test multiple times. If that's you, it's okay. Um, just put in more time and effort. But if you fail the test, this is uh, uh, my tip for you guys is to schedule the test particularly quickly again. Like, like if you failed it today, that's fine. Just schedule it again tomorrow or the next day. Try not to let too much time pass. You know, don't be too down on yourself. Just schedule it again because what, schedule, schedule it while it's fresh and the content is still in your head um, because you can schedule it literally the very next day um, with, with, the, with uh, every state's PNC test, you can schedule it literally the very next day. So. If you fail, it's okay. Just schedule it again and you'll be all right. Um, there's a good chance that you'll pass it the following time. Now, if you're just scoring these awful scores, then I maybe don't recommend, you know, scheduling the very next day. I recommend putting, you know, following the other tips, which is, which is uh, number one, spend more time taking these practice exams. Spend more time going through um, the actual content itself to make sure you're better prepared. But if you miss it within 10 questions, schedule it the very next day. Um, start studying that that exact night and then you should be prepared uh, to pass your PNC test. So in conclusion, I hope this helps you guys pass your PNC test. Um, again, it's uh, I don't think it's that hard of a test and that's coming from the probably the worst test taker in history. Um, but I'm a huge believer in getting enough sleep, 
you know, getting drinking enough water, you know, making sure that you're fully rested and, and, and you're, you're eating a healthy, you know, meal before you're not nothing too heavy, not eating anything crazy. Um, ton of YouTube videos on your drive to take the test. Um, try not to last minute cram, uh, you know, say a good old, you know, pre-test prayer. <laughs> if that's, if that's, you know, your faith, um, you should be prepared to pass this test. Just make sure you're putting in the work, make sure you're putting in the time studying, um, the content and you should be able to pass this test. And if you, if you don't, it's all, it's all good. Just schedule it again and, uh, and then hammer it the second time. So if you got some value out of this video, please, uh, subscribe for all future videos where I talk all things insurance, self-development and, uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, follow me on all my social media platforms. Good luck on your guys' test. You got this. And afterwards, watch all my other videos because I talk all things insurance to help you crush sales and insurance. Uh, do me a favor, smash the like button. Good luck on your test. Peace.